Hi there and welcome to this video in the IBM Cloud Foundation Skill Series. And in this video, we're going to look at actually creating an enterprise. So this is going to be a lab. We're going to go into the console and we're actually going to log into an existing account that has a subscription. I'm then going to go and create the enterprise and show you how to do that. Then I'm going to create some new accounts within the enterprise and then create some account groups. And then I'm going to show you basically how to move accounts between the account groups. OK, so let's go and have a look. Okay, so here I am in my IBM Cloud account in my dashboard. So I'm just going to go and uh, check a couple of things. So first of all, I'm going to check my billing and usage um, just to uh, just to show you that I have an active subscription. So again, to actually do this, you do need an active subscription on your account. Otherwise, you won't be able to um, actually create an enterprise. So you can see here that I've got uh, a subscription that's actually active on this account. So we're all good to go. So to actually create the enterprise, what I need to do is click Manage and then click Enterprise. And then what happens is I'm taken to this screen here, which is uh, all about cloud enterprises. So um, if you want to know more about cloud enterprise through the console, then just navigate to Manage and then Enterprise. And then uh, you can go and watch some more videos uh, and read some more information about it. Now what I'm going to do is actually create uh, an enterprise. So I'm going to uh, hit the Create button over here. And uh, what I'm actually asked for is um, a, a name for my organization's enterprise. So I'm going to call this um, James Belton Enterprise. And I'm going to have a, a, an optional domain. I can put a domain in there if I want to. I'm going to leave the domain blank for now. Let's just see what it says under the information. So it's a domain or a subdomain to associate with your enterprise. So um, again, I don't really have um, an a domain uh, associated to, to me. So I'm going to just leave that blank because it's optional. So just uh, uh, noting the, um, the, the blurb here. So... It's basically saying that this account is going to be permanently Im imported into the enterprise. So that means billing is going to be managed by the enterprise, uh, but all of the resources and the access that I have within this account is going to remain the same. So um, just remember that once you've created the enterprise, the account can't be removed from it. So again, you know, before you do this, just make sure that you really do want to do it. Um, if you don't want to, or, or you want to use a different subscription account, then cancel at this point and uh, don't go any further. So I'm going to, um, I, I do want to use this account, so I'm going to uh, check the I understand the impact of my account button and then I'm going to click create. So it's just going to go away now and uh, create the enterprise for me. Okay, so it's telling me success and I'm going to be um, switched to my enterprise view. So what this is basically telling me is the, uh, the name of my dashboard, the name of my enterprise, uh, the name of my account, so I've got two accounts at the moment, and um, the number of users I have in my enterprise. So it's only me actually invited to this enterprise right now. So let's go and just double check the accounts that I've got. So um, we've got uh, the James Belton Enterprise, so that's uh, um, the, uh, the the contact for that. And then you can see the two accounts that are actually um, in there. So it's the original account that I created, which is James Belton's account. And uh, then the account that I've just created, which is James Belton Enterprise. OK, so let's go uh, and actually add another account. So if I click on the Add button here, what I can do is either create a brand new account or I can go and import an account. So if I click on Import Account, then um, basically um, if I'm a, an account owner somewhere else where I have the rights, um, the, the right kind of rights to a different account uh, within, uh, within IBM Cloud, then um, I will be I will be presented with a list here, and then from that list I can choose which account that I want to actually import. I don't actually have another account in this system where I can uh, where I have those those rights, so um, this list is actually blank, so I can't actually go further and do this. But um, but again, um, it's fairly simple. You just choose the account. Um, you just need to read the blurb here to make sure that you're um, you're happy that it's going to happen and that it can't be removed from the enterprise after you import it. So again, just make sure you've cho chosen the right account uh, because once you've uh, once you've chosen it, once you've checked the box and once you've clicked import, um, there's no going back. So let's just cancel that. 
uh, because I can't do it. And uh, let's just add a, add a add a new account so I can create an account. Um, so I need to give the account a name. So um, let's uh, call this um, uh, let's call this James Belton um, Dev Proj. Um, and then I just need to give an IBM ID. So this is obviously a, a valid IBM ID. Um, so let's use my email address for this. Um, so that's the account owner. Now it can be yourself, it can be somebody else. Um, it just needs to be, um, let's have a look at here. So it just needs to be um, someone with an IBM ID that's registered with IBM Cloud, but they don't need to be in the enterprise. So it can literally be any user um, that has an IBM ID that's registered with IBM Cloud. Uh, <clears throat> now the next thing is the parent. So the parent is obviously gonna be the enterprise. So um, so that's it, that's all I need to do to create the account. Um, and uh, and basically what now happens is the account will be created. Um, the account owner, so this person here, can then start inviting users and managing their access. Um, but all of the usage in the account is billed to the enterprise's default billing option. So let's create that. Okay, so you can see that that account has now been created. Uh, and uh, is actually active as well. So if we, um, so let's just check out under here. So this is uh, this is where we switch accounts. So what you'll notice is that I've got the enterprise account, so James Belton enterprise account, and I've also then got James Belton's account. So this is this one here. So these are the two accounts that I can uh, I can look at. I can't look at this one, uh, and that's basically because you'll notice that the owner is different. So because I'm in a test system at the moment. Um, the uh, the actual owner is, um, is is this address here, which is a test address, uh, but the actual owner of this um, account is uh, is me with my my normal email address, and that's why it's not showing down here because I'm not the account owner, uh, and I haven't got privileges to actually um, log into that account either because effectively I'm a different user. So um, the other thing that I can do in here is then look at account groups. So this is a way to actually organize um, your related accounts. Again, it's dead easy to create an, an account group. So let's click create. And uh, so let's give this uh, uh, group a name. So let's call, uh, let's have one called uh, development account. So development account. So the contact for this, um, let's leave the contact as uh, the account owner. So that's me. Um, and then again, what's the parent to this? So um, so we've got uh, at the moment the, the enterprise is the parent. So let's, uh, let's cre uh, click create there. And this is creating an account group. So you can see, uh, so you see that's been um, created. Um, let's try and create another one. So maybe we can call this, I don't know, production accounts. Example. Uh, so again, same same drill. Now what you can see here is is a different parent. So you can see that the enterprise is a parent here, and because I've got a, another account group, you can see that that other account group can be a parent as well. So right now I'm going to um, keep that as uh, the, the parent as the enterprise. So I'm going to click create there. And uh, I'm going to create one more account group just to give you a a, um, a flavor for how you can nest um, these account groups. So let's um, call this one uh, development, and let's call that um, UK. So for United Kingdom. So again, we're going to stick with the same contacts. It's the only one there, and um, I'm going to put this in the development account parent. So again, just use the drop down there and click create. So away that goes. And again, that's uh, going to be uh, created and should be fairly quick. So then what you can see over on this side is there's a bit of a hierarchy. So you can see if I click into there, um, you can see that the, the hierarchy is, is um, shown. So I've got development accounts and I've got development UK. And I've got production accounts, there's nothing in there. So then what I can start to do is actually um, add groups. So let's just see if I can, let's see if I can dr drag and drop these. So let's try and drag it into uh, 
into there. So no, it's not letting me do that. Um, so uh, maybe I'll do that from this level over here. So if I click move account, so this is dev proj, so I can click move account. So I can then change the parent. So I can either put that in development accounts, put it in production accounts, or I can put it in development UK. So I'm going to pop that in development UK. So basically moving the account doesn't change anything about its billing or their access or anything. It's just a logical move. Um, so if I click that there, then it's just moving the uh, the group around or moving the account into that different group. So there you go. You can now see that that's nested in under development accounts and into development UK. And if I've made a if I've made a mistake there, um, then um, what I can then do is is change that. So if I click into there, uh, then I can click move again, and uh, I can then move it back up to. Uh, development accounts for instance so let's try that so let's click move so again basically I can move this account around as much as I like um, without actually uh, really affecting it it's just a, a logical move but you can see now that uh, uh, that um, that James Belton dev proj account is now in uh, development accounts so hopefully from that you can see that setting up an enterprise isn't actually uh, very difficult. So I'm just going to quickly go through the steps um, that we saw. So first of all, you saw me log into my, my account, James Belton's account, um, which had a subscription attached to it. So I logged in and I then went to create an enterprise. In the next step, you'd saw that the, uh, the new enterprise account had been created. So that was called James Belton Enterprise. And the subscription had actually moved to the enterprise account. So in terms of the original account, the James Belton account, um, basically what we saw is the billing had moved, the account became a child to the enterprise, it became an, a, 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 an account within the enterprise. But other than that, nothing about it changed. There was no changes to ownership, there was no changes to any of the permissions within that account. Then in the next step, you saw me actually create um, a couple of account groups, so one called development accounts, one called production accounts. So those were groups that were basically children of the enterprise account. And then you saw me create a, a new developer account. So James Belton Dev Proj, uh, which is kind of intended to be my developer account. Uh, the other thing that you saw was that that actually had a different account owner as well. So because it had a different account owner, that meant that I couldn't actually log into that account um, using the credentials that I was logged into my console with basically because I didn't have any permissions within that new account within the James Belton Dev Proj account to do so. So the next step was that I actually then created a new UK account group uh, and then you saw me actually move um, the James Belton Dev Proj account into that account group. So again I moved the account but nothing else in that account actually changed. So lastly, just a few things to remember. So when you create your enterprise, a new enterprise account is created. So you'll log into your existing account, um, you'll go to create the account, and then a brand new enterprise account gets created for you. So your existing account then becomes a member of the enterprise. But remember, no permissions or ownerships in the accounts that become managed by the enterprise are ever changed. Uh, and also the accounts in the enterprise can still only be managed and accessed by those with the right privileges. So even if you're the owner of the enterprise account itself, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can access any of the accounts that are children within the enterprise. OK, so that's it for this video. I hope it's been useful and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then please subscribe to my channel so that you'll be notified when more videos drop. But in the meantime, thanks very much again for watching and we'll see you next time.